Amen. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Apostle Dr. Linda, Apostle Jeff, and we want to welcome you to Monday night uh, Covenant Life Church Discipleship class. Amen. Let's see if we can get Jeff's head in here. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. Hun, would you please pray for us? Yes. Lord, it's a privilege to come into your presence, to gather together as your people to seek your face and your anointing and your blessings and your words of, of admonition and correction, if need be. And Lord, we, we praise you for your word. We praise you for what you've done in our lives and what you are doing. Lord, we look forward to the future with hearts filled with hope and faith and joy. In Jesus' name, we ask for a, your presence in this meeting tonight and we give you the praise and the glory for it amen amen well we want to thank you for joining us tonight amen we want to say a special shout out to all of you that have been so gracious to uh, support us in prayer and donations and various things thank you amen it's been a wonderful thing for us you greatly encouraged us and we we just really really uh, appreciate everything that everyone does mm -hmm. for the church and for us thank you and we hope that you all had a great uh, Mother's Day yesterday. Amen. And uh, so uh, before we get started tonight, uh, just a, a quick announcement. Wanted to remind everybody that Apostle Desiree Fox is going to be uh, on Facebook with us this coming Sunday at 2.30 in the afternoon. Amen. And um, so we want to encourage you to please tune in. And uh, that'll be at 2.30 in the afternoon. Okay, Eastern Standard Time. All right, one second, let me see here. Make sure we're up and running. I know from our end we are, but I haven't heard from anybody. Amen. So anyway, uh, please uh, save the date. Okay, that's this coming Sunday uh, at 2.30 Eastern Standard Time. And we encourage you to uh, join us. And Apostle Desiree moves and signs miracles and wonders. And she is a dynamo. I want to tell you, she's great. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a great service. Amen. So if you need a miracle, you need to hear from the Lord or whatever the situation is, we want to <coughs> encourage you uh, to uh, please tune in. Okay. Amen. And then um, all of our services are normal for this week. Tomorrow night, 7.30 dial in for prayer tabernacle. Friday uh, is table talk. And so we're back on path. Also want to remind you at the end of the month is um, Memorial Day weekend. And on the holiday weekends, we always take our Friday, Monday off to give our staff a break. And so we uh, normally just have Sunday, 2.30 uh, in the afternoon service. Okay, all right, with that, uh, once again, oh, and if anyone is new out there, we want to invite you. Uh, to our website, www.covenant-life-church.org. Amen. We got all kinds of stuff on our website. There's all kinds of resources and encouraging uh, sermons. Amen. With that, we're going to turn it over to Apostle Jeff, and he's going to give a teaching tonight. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Well, I first I want to say happy Mother's Day to all our mothers and grandmothers and future mothers and everybody, uh, because... Uh, <laughs> I wasn't here Sunday because I didn't feel good, uh, but I'm back in the saddle tonight. So, Amen, and we're happy. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I wanted Amen. to talk uh, with you tonight about prophetic terminology and the timing of the Lord and some of those issues. If you've been with us for a while, you've heard some of this. If you're new, and we have a lot of new people out there, so I thought it was important to go over this. Amen. And I just feel that it's the message for, for tonight. And so if you would turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, and I know those of you who have electronic devices want the verse right away, so it's 16. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll go to 50. We can just Is that finish. the New Testament, honey? Yeah. Okay, it's Ephesians, what, 5.15? 5.15. Okay, thank you, got it. See then that you walk circumspectly, 
not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now, if ever there was a time when the days were evil, this is it. Yeah. And we've been through an evil time. That pandemic, that mm -hmm. plague was evil and mm -hmm. is evil. Mm -hmm. Anything that brings death is evil. Anything yeah. that makes people sick is evil. Anything that, that like that that happens is from the devil. Mm -hmm. And so throughout the 2020 and the early part of 21, a, a lot of us have lost certain things. We've lost relationships, we've lost jobs, we've lost uh, money, uh, uh, we've lost opportunities. And I'm here to say that the Lord can redeem the time. Therefore, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And so I believe it's a new season that requires a new sense of purpose and vision. Mm -hmm. what we lost from the past can be redeemed and brought into your future amen that's right so you don't you, with, when you belong to god you don't ever lose anything yes that you're that's from him mm -hmm. that you unless you give it up or give up on it yeah that's right but he doesn't lose god mm -hmm. never lose and the devil never wins that's right he's the biggest loser of all time mm -hmm. all right so <clears throat> We have to be re willing to reset our purpose and our vision. Now, sometimes when we talk about purpose and vision, we think right away about pulpit ministry or, or uh, what we call the Christian ministry. Well, that's a part of it. But you know, the church needs successful businesses. The church needs to have... Uh, some a uh, political uh, influence it has to have uh, people in what we term secular industries that are Christians. If ever there was a time we needed Christians in government, it's now. And when I say Christians, I mean dedicated Christians, not somebody that just goes around with a cross around their neck. That's just jewelry. I'm talking about what's in your heart. Amen. And so, but we have to realize something. God not only thinks differently, his definition of time is different. Yes. Time belongs to God. He's eternal. He's not affected by time, mm -hmm. but he does operate in time. He comes in time to meet us where we are. Amen. So he's not. Uh, unaware of time, but he, it doesn't hinder him either. Now, I just want to tell you tonight that God said to tell you he's already been to your future. Yeah. You see, three people <laughs> have a vision for your future. Yeah. You have a vision or a plan. The devil has a future or a plan. And God has a future and a plan. So, yeah, so who's going to win? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, hopefully God will. God can redeem the time and bring what has happened, the evil that has happened, and bring it into your future. That opportunity you lost, he's got a better opportunity. Yes, that's that right. That promotion you didn't get, there's a better promotion. That house you couldn't buy. That's right. He's got a better house. That's right. Amen. Never give up on the goodness and love of God. Yeah. So, so now, wait a minute, honey. I, I, I'm, I'm going to give a, a testimony okay. on, on behalf of our pastors here. Yeah. And um, I'll just say it in general terms, okay? Because this really taught me something. Um, you know, what Apostle Jeff just said is absolutely true. You know, our ways are not God's ways right? He has a different approach to everything. Mm -hmm. And the more that we read the Bible and commune with him and spend time with him, we receive a revelation of his ways. Mm -hmm. And that, that will really help you um, in, in your walk of faith with, with God. And, um, and so the pastors, we've been praying for, for them for a couple of years to 
uh, move out of their, their current lo location uh, in, into a house. And uh, I, I don't know if Pastor Andre and Sean have given this testimony, but I just want to share something that I learned through this, which is very applicable to what Apostle Jeff just said. So we were praying a couple of years, uh, really doing fasting and praying and different things. And uh, they were turned down for like three homes. And I was getting mad at the devil. You know, I was <laughs> beating my war tum-tums. When, when aren't you angry and, at the devil? And, you know, really rebuking and asking the Lord what is going on. And, you know, these, you know, these people serve you and they're faithful. And Lord, what's up here? You know, mm -hmm. and really getting mad about it. So then uh, all of a sudden this, this, this little place shows up and uh, Pastor Andrea loves it. And um, Sean does too. Amen. And, but she had a secret desire in her heart. The reason I said Andrea, because she had a secret desire of what she wanted in, in this house. And, you know, none of us knew that, but God did. Okay. And so um there and here here you know so god gave her exactly what she wanted yeah and that's why it was a longer wait because it was something special that she wanted that not every house had okay and so there was many circumstances that had to be worked out for her to get the to get the desire of her heart okay and so that taught me something personally that i had kind of forgotten about you know, all of us have secret desires right. in our heart that sometimes we don't even verbalize to even the one we're married to or the people that we love or whoever. OK, there might be something hidden in your heart that that you really want. But, you know, God knows that. And our father, he loves us so much. Amen. That he wants the best for us. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that he will not withhold any good thing. Right. So. I'm waiting on my healing. Maybe you're waiting on yours. Maybe you're waiting on a new job, a new house, or whatever. Okay. But he will not withhold any good thing. That's so right. it's going to come in the right time. Amen. And it's going to come in the right way. Mm -hmm. And and that's why it's so important that we trust God, Amen. that we don't give up on, on God. Mm -hmm. Okay. He doesn't give up on us. And we're yeah. not going to give up on him because of his grace. Mm -hmm. Amen. But it taught me that God really wants to, to bless us. Amen. And so I, I marvel at what the Lord did for them. And, and yeah, they had to wait longer, but God is working it all out. Okay. Praise God. Cause that's the kind of Lord that we serve. Amen. And so trust the Lord today. Amen. 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 Trust the Lord today. Amen. Okay. Amen. All right, honey, I just want to so, share that. God can redeem the time. You know, the actions of men can delay the, the ultimate purpose of God. Oh, yes, it can. Mm -hmm. Moses caused a 30-year delay when he killed that Egyptian. He had to run out into the desert. And it was another 30 years before God started to deal with them about being the deliverer of Israel. Trying to do things in your own time and in your own power is going to give it the Ishmael every time. Mm -hmm. You know, Abram and Sarah had a good idea and Abraham went along with it. Yeah. You know, to have a child through her handmaid. Mm -hmm. And it, <clears throat> he's uh so she gave birth to Ishmael. Well, of course, that wasn't God's best. It wasn't God's time. And it wasn't God's idea. So that Ishmael's there, right? Taunting. And the sons of Ishmael and the sons of, of Aaron have been fighting ever since. To this day. And, then, and that's where a lot of the to, stuff is going on right now. Today? Yes. Uh, they're firing rockets that's right from gaza the sons of ishmael are firing rockets from uh, gaza into israel and that's what happens mm -hmm. uh, when you start having your own good idea that's right you know the, the time of the second coming has not been determined yet 
Well, what do you mean? It's the fact that it's going to happen <coughs> is not in doubt. But when has not been determined. The church will determine the second coming. Amen. And <coughs> this is why Bishop always preaches in Acts. It says that, uh, you know, the Lord is not going to come until everything has been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now he knows the uh, time, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, he is God and he knows the exact time. Right. So listen to second Peter three eleven. Mm -hmm. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, <clears throat> what manner of person ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God. Yes. Look at that. We can, we're looking for it, and we can hasten its coming. Right. Mm -hmm. Because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. You see, the day of God is not a good day for the world. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it's a great day for us. You need some water there, honey? Yeah. No, I'm good. Okay. <clears throat> You'll have to forgive me. I've been fighting this cold for a week now. And uh, he is going to push through tonight. So please pray for him. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the church is the bride of Christ. Now, if you were the father, wouldn't you wait until you had a perfect bride for your son? <laughs> so the more the church becomes like Christ, the more we become like Christ. The more we build the kingdom, the more we do in this present time, the sooner the Lord is going to return. Amen. All right. We have to understand how God sees eternity. Mm -hmm. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in a high and holy place with him who is who has a contrite and humble spirit mm -hmm. to revive the spirit of the humble mm -hmm. and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Mm -hmm. He has all things in view. He knows what the enemy is doing. He knows what you need and when you need it. He has already provided for it by grace. He knows the spiritual and natural impact it will have on your life. Proverbs 20, 21 says, an inheritance gained hastily at the beginning will not be blessed at the end. Mm -hmm. God is deliberately unclear so that we have to seek him, walk by faith, and the enemy doesn't know what's coming next. Mm -hmm. All right? He doesn't tell us everything. Right. Because when we speak about it or talk about it, that's when the enemy finds out. That's right. You see, when you get a prophecy... We've taught this many times and it bears repeating here. When you get a prophecy, you're not the only one who's listening. That's right. <laughs> and so you get this prophecy about uh, a great business or mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have an increase in, in finances or this or that. That's when the devil says, oh, well, we'll see about that and mm -hmm. sign a couple of demons. Mm -hmm. All right, to stop you. And your your prophecies will be challenged. Yes, that's oh, yeah. what Apostle Jeff is saying. Mm -hmm. And this is what prophetic people need to uh, understand. Okay, right. And when you get a huge word like that about your future or whatever, God is is letting you know what His best is for you, mm -hmm. of what His perfect will is. That's right. And whether you believe it or not, the demons do. Okay, because right. they know they know the anointing. They know that that's that's, that's a right. it's a word from God, so yeah. they will challenge it. And so, if for example, if if the word to you is, you know, you're going to start ministry in in two days, all of a sudden, all heck is going to break loose all around you. They'll try anything to stop you from going into ministry in those two days, mm -hmm. and they'll try to depress you. And make, make you believe that the word's mm -hmm. not going to come to pass mm -hmm. because they're challenging it. Mm -hmm. And that's why we must always understand spiritual mm -hmm. warfare 
and do the warfare and have right, done right. all the stand. Now, but you said something there that uh, that's important. If you're just beginning in prophesying and the prophetic, even if you've been at it a while. In fact, I'd even say if you're an ordained prophet, be careful about putting dates on things. Yes. All right. Because if you say something like you'll be married in two years, that limits the amount of time God has to work with. Amen. And so if after two and a half, three years, somebody gives up, well, that word isn't true. I'm not going to marry this or do this or that. You see the mess it starts? It may very well have been God's will with somebody be married. Mm -hmm. But we let God handle the details. Mm -hmm. Really, truly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we need to be, and that's another thing. Things like marriage, birth of babies, when you're going to be healed, are you going to be healed? But unless you have a strong unction and word from your in your spirit, you're better off not saying or prophesying that. Keep it more gen generalized. Yeah, I say it's Lord mm -hmm. wants you to be healed. Well, I can read the Bible and know that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know you can. But when mm -hmm. somebody speaks out of their spirit and it's received in your spirit, it activates faith. Amen. Okay. All right. So. Amen. So uh, an another um, word I want to mention on, on that, because the timing, like Apostle Jeff said, is very important. Okay. That we don't get messed up by timing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, we've even prophesied, I've prophesied many times in two to three years, this is going to happen. Five to 10, this is going to happen. Okay. That's the impression that I have in my spirit. Okay, well, maybe it's it's the 11th year that it happened mm -hmm. instead of the 10th year. <laughs> right. Okay, these are, all, when, when you hear timing, it's a ballpark, mm -hmm. okay? You're like, better off mm -hmm. not talking about timing at all. If you're not experienced, especially we, what we always right. train- In your experience. In our prophetic so. classes, right. okay? Uh, to uh, avoid specifics on timing, so mm -hmm. that you don't damage people's faith, okay? But we also teach, that's why you got to stand in faith, amen? And amen. having done all to stand. So when you know in general that the word is from the Lord, it's going to come to pass at some point, amen? Then yeah. you just keep on believing amen. and keep on praying it through, yeah. amen? Matthew 13, 11, he answered and said to them, because it's been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Mm -hmm. So mystery, notice it says mysteries. Yes. There's things yet to be revealed. Yes. <clears throat> by the church. Mm -hmm. Some things like the prophetic movement, mm -hmm. the apostolic movement, the third reformation, mm -hmm. these are things that the church is bringing revelation. That's right. Yeah. Now, that just because it's a revelation doesn't mean everybody believes it. Mm -hmm. But I've learned to seek God for myself and read the word. And if it lines up with my spirit and with the word of God, or actually the word of God has primacy mm -hmm. for when you're judging revelation. If it lines up with those two things, I'm going to receive it and believe it mm -hmm. and walk in it. Okay. Amen. Yes. Amen. So a mystery is a hidden or secret thing, not obvious to the understanding. When the prophetic first started, there wasn't understood. All right. It was a mystery hidden in God. Lack of understanding tests the hearts of those who are serious and those who are not. Trying to understand how God is working is often difficult because we don't realize the maturing process. Something that is easy to get is not valued, nor is it well taken care of. The cost of the blessing will definitely cause it to be treasured. It will cost us to not want to do anything that would cause us to lose it. Amen. So we're going to go into uh, some elements of the, of the prophetic. Uh, that God's sense of timing is always perfect. Amen. 
not according to us, <laughs> yeah, but according to him. Right. All right. John 11, 5 through 7. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Yeah. If somebody told me mm -hmm. somebody in our church was sick, I wouldn't wait two days. Right. I wouldn't wait two minutes. Right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But you know, God seems to never be in a hurry, <laughs> but he's always there on time. He's on time. God has always seemed to take longer than man thinks he should. But remember, man's nature is to be impatient. It's his nature to be impatient. Mm -hmm. You know, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, yeah. patience, goodness. <clears throat> meekness gentleness <clears throat> self-control <clears throat> now there's a big one yeah. self-control yeah so we need to be patient because our timing is not his time and you know man is always in a hurry abraham's impatience produced an ishmael Saul forced himself to offer a sacrifice. Good heavens. Who forced him to? He was the king. I want to know. <laughs> Saul forced right. himself to offer a sacrifice right. instead of waiting for Samuel. Right. Remember, God will come through on time. Yeah. His time. Yeah. So let's Saul, look. there's a spirit of fear, you know, inducing him. Oh, yeah. And I don't blame him a whole lot. I can understand it. I mean, there's a whole bunch of Philistines out there. Yeah. And they want to kill you. Yeah. But, and your men are fleeing. Yeah. But there's a case in point where that right. spirit of fear jumped on him. Right. And he even said that. And he didn't I, resist I, it. I was afraid. Right. And, and look how it cost him the kingdom. That, mm -hmm. that one act induced by that spirit of fear cost him the mm -hmm. kingdom. That's serious. Yeah, but here's where we want we want to look at time and timing. Mm -hmm. All right, when Samuel came and found out that Saul had saved the best of everything and it kept the king alive, right? He said, "The kingdom has been torn from you and given to a neighbor yeah. who's better than you." Right. All right, but you know that didn't come to pass till thirty eight years later. You know, and that's an amazing point. Saul yeah. fought the Lord's battles. Yes, he did. He won victories. Yes, he did. He took land for the kingdom. Yes, he did. <coughs> he did everything but what God told him to do. You know, but yet look at the mercy of yeah. God with that too. And because mm -hmm. his actions were going to have results on, on God's people. Right. God did things for Saul, mm -hmm. even though he had rejected him. Mm -hmm. So please get it through your, your, in your little military mind, like we used to say. Mm -hmm. The sound of the presence of the supernatural, the presence of a big church is not necessarily more anointed than a smaller one. Mm -hmm. It just maybe has a better sound system or a <laughs> light show or who knows what? All right. Maybe their leader is very charismatic. You know, that that's fine. What I'm saying is results do not guarantee God's approval of any minister or ministry. Are you with me here? Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because in these last days that we're in right now, the devil's going to have lying signs and wonders. Yes. And that can fool even the elect. Yeah, that's what it says. Because we're chasing signs and wonders instead mm -hmm. of chasing Christ and his word. Mm -hmm. Oh, please don't tell me that. Yes, I'm telling you that. You know, that's why we tell, you know, I, <laughs> I read all the time about how to, how to grow your church and how to 
go from uh, 30 to 3,000 in one year and all that kind of nonsense. And, and it, some of the ideas are okay. Some of the, some of the uh, methods are all right. But basically, Linda and I preach what we believe the truth is. And we preach what we believe the Lord wants preached. And so whether that leads to a really big church or a small, I'm not, I care about people. And of course, the more people you have, the more resources you have, the more volunteers you have, the more ministry you can do. So, you know, it's important. <clears throat> but really, it's not the most important thing. <clears throat> Winning souls is important. Amen. Making disciples is important. Encouraging people to get to know God, get to know Christ, mm -hmm. to have a relationship with the Lord. Amen. In the end, that's what's going to put you over. That's what's going to put the church over. Amen. Okay. All right. Amen. So <clears throat> here's some time expressions taken from the scriptures. Galatians 4.4. 4. <clears throat> when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son. The fullness of time. What, what, what is the fullness of time? It is a time when God is ready to move his, pl his plan forward. Mm -hmm. Now, why at that specific time? Because there was a thing called the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. They enforced laws, built roads, had a large shipping uh, between countries, a, a, a large enough economy that you could move from place to place. For the most part, they helped keep crime under, so you could travel the roads Everything needed to spread the gospel mm -hmm. was fullness. Amen. In Israel, they were getting really off the beam with these Pharisees and Sadducees and Sadducees saying there's no heaven, there's no angels, there's no. That's why they were sad, you see. <laughs> and so uh -huh. <laughs> you'll get it tomorrow. <laughs> so, so what I'm trying to say is. God looks at all the circumstances and decides when it's time to move. Right. That's the fullness of time. Okay. Right. Amen. There's a day coming when the church is going to be gone. Mm -hmm. There'll be another fullness of time. Yes. Amen. There'll be time to retake the redeemed home. And it'll mm -hmm. be time to bring judgment on the wicked. And that's what's going to happen. Amen. All right. All right. First Timothy 2 6. Jesus Christ gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. In due time. We're still in that due time. Right. You know, he's been a ransom mm -hmm. and we have the responsibility. Mm -hmm. Romans 5 6. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. Galatians 4 2, the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant until the time appointed by the father. There is a maturing process in your prophetic growth and development, in your building Christ like character. There is a process. And your next move up, your next promotions, to put it, in, I don't know how else to put it. The next advancement in your anointing, the next advancement in your power and authority. Oh, yes, there's levels of power and authority. Yes. Oh, I know. You know, we're all the same. No, we are not all the same in levels of power and authority. We're all the same as children of God. We all love the same. Mm -hmm. But there is, well, God is a respecter of no persons. No, but he's a respecter of faith. Yes. Amen. So... So on that note, just a second, very important, because the difference is when he says there's no respect or persons, you can have what we have and we can have what you have in Christ, but there is a price to pay. You have to be faithful. 
-hmm. you have to stand in the word you got to do all those things right right that that the bible says mm -hmm. amen you got to be bottom line be obedient to what god has told you to you to do amen and when That's you right. do that no matter who you are male right. female whoever mm -hmm. god will promote you amen mm -hmm. so it's up to us whether or not we want to be promoted to the next level in christ right whatever that is right okay psalm 105 17 joseph until the time that his word came the prophetic word by a uh, dream that he got way back when he was a young, young man. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. That's right. Think about what Joseph went through. Oh, man. Yes. And yet the vision was that his entire family was going to bow to him. Yeah. And you know what? They did. Mm -hmm. because he was the second most influential person in the world but how many years was it that well, until that that came you know, to pass I'm, I'm not sure I, I'm well, sure I think it was 15 to 20 years later oh at least at yeah least. it was years later it was not tomorrow and he you know he went through <laughs> prison being falsely yeah. accused betrayal his own brothers threw him down they were well gonna kill him he okay. was sold into slavery right I mean, all of that all that but because Joseph was continuously faithful through the process, <clears throat> he not only obtained his destiny, completed the work of God in mm -hmm. his life. Right. Not only had a, but he had blessings. Mm -hmm. In prison, he was the, the keeper of the prison. Right. Uh, you know, wherever he was sold, uh, Potiphar. Now, you know, you would say, well, it was just a coincidence they became Potiphar's servant. No, it's no co uh, co coincidence. That was no coincidence, no. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> Joseph could have spent his time <clears throat> being, uh, you know, bitter. Mm -hmm. He could have been uh, saying, where's God when you need him? Well, he could have turned his back on God he could have totally. Turned his back on God with all that did. stuff going on. Wow! But yeah. he didn't do that. He went to work mm -hmm. as a slave, mm -hmm. and he was recognized. Right. See, when the blessing of God is on your life out of, through faithfulness, that's when favor comes your way. Amen. All right. I've had the mm -hmm. the, the blessings of God mm -hmm. come upon me that I didn't even ask for. Mm -hmm. You know, they just showed up. Mm -hmm. I've been in some pretty tough spots. But in the midst of that, something good always happened for me. Right. And so until the time that his word came, there was a specific time mm -hmm. when God was going to bring his word to pass. Right. And when he did, the trials, the temperature, all that was over. And it was Joseph's time to walk in the fullness of his blessing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Psalm 31, 15. You are my God. My times are in your hands. Mm -hmm. Galatians 6, not. Be not weary in well-doing, for you shall reap in due season if you faint not. <clears throat> now, I think it's interesting that it says due season. Mm -hmm. That's not a set time. That's right. a season. Yeah. And that's good because that's a longer period of time. You right. know, it said you mm -hmm. shall reap in due week or in due month, but it does is due season. Yeah. There's a season coming. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't seen any season. That's because you're still in springtime, darling. Keep moving. Amen. <clears throat> Sometimes we see things like suddenly. You know, suddenly something happened. Mm -hmm. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Right. How long were they waiting? And it though? filled all the house where they were sitting. Yeah. From this scripture, one would think that this suddenly was an unexpected <laughs> surprise from God <clears throat> without anyone preparing or believing for it. And it happened overnight, right? The reality is they <laughs> waited in the upper room for days with fasting and prayer. That's right. In preparation for this moment. Yeah. Only about 25% of the original 500 waited for the manifestation. 
Right. All the rest got tired. The rest got home. tired and went home. So they weren't yeah. there when the rushing mighty this, wind this came didn't, in. This didn't happen overnight. So we're going home. Yeah. <laughs> Ten days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we have to understand that there is a process and there is time in the in the fulfillment of prophetic prophecy and mm -hmm. in your life in general yes there's timing and process mm -hmm. and you can't escape it <clears throat> and if you try, try try to go around it you're going to get messed up i'm telling you mm -hmm. amen just wait for the lord just wait amen. and i ain't hey, believe me i know waiting's hard oh boy so <laughs> yeah. we all gotta wait amen you're a lot better at it than you used to you were thank you honey we all gotta wait okay and you know Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. So I'd like for you right now to turn to Mark chapter four, Mac, Mark chapter four. Okay. Verse 26. Okay, got it. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day. And the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. Mm -hmm. For the earth yields crops by itself. First the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle. Because the harvest has come. He said the kingdom of God was like this. Mm -hmm. You know, the suddenly and the immediately is based upon progressive growth and preparation until full maturity is reached. Mm -hmm. You don't put the seed in and tomorrow reap a crop. It just doesn't work that way. Right, a seed time and harvest. The seed is first planted, mm -hmm. germination takes place, it sprouts and begins to grow, full stock produces grain. When it's fully ripe and seasoned, then immediately the harvest comes. Mm -hmm. So when the church is fully ripe, the angel's gonna put in the sickle. And God is going to reap his harvest. Amen. Mm -hmm. But that has application to us on a daily basis. Okay. There is, you may be planting seed for something right now. Mm -hmm. You might be in a place now where you things you've sown into are beginning to, to show results. Maybe it's in the stalk or it's in the blade, mm -hmm. but it's coming. One should not spend time worrying or being concerned about when God is going to move mightily. We should keep preparing and doing what we can do with what we have to do it with. It's God who causes it to grow mm -hmm. without much notice by others or by the one receiving the seed within their spirit. Keep believing in the vision and confessing it is coming to pass. Continue moving in the direction of your personal prophecy, for only the master knows the proper time for the harvest. For example, Noah's boat building ministry. Mm -hmm. God spoke a seed when Noah was 500 years old. Noah was 600 years old before the need was manifest. He progressively prepared and labored for 100 years without any evidence of a flood coming. <clears throat> suddenly it began to rain mm -hmm. moses deliverance ministry supernatural manifestation manifestations take place in his life the burning bush divine commissioning and endowment of power two he had two years of going before pharaoh working many miracles yet still refused and rejected mm -hmm persistently acted upon his personal prophecies from the Lord. <clears throat> Immediately, in one day, Moses led three million Israelites out of Egypt and headed towards the promised land. Amen. See, you're, there's an immediate time when the right. blessing's going to come. Right. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, you have to keep on plugging. That's right. Amen. <laughs> that's right. Amen. You, that's why we always say, don't get weary and well doing. Keep Amen. on. Abraham was told mm -hmm. you're going to 
go to a land I will show you. Mm -hmm. He didn't say where it was. He just said, go. Yeah. And so Abraham got up and went. And that's the way, that's the way he handles us today. Amen. Yeah. And he went. He was plotting every day. Plotting, 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 plotting. Amen. Till he came to a rest place. <clears throat> and then after he'd been there long enough, he was back out. Plotting, 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 mm -hmm. plotting, plotting. Till eventually he ended up in the promised land. Can I see that plotting again? Plotting, plotting, sure plotting, plotting, <laughs> plotting. <laughs> Wise guy. <clears throat> yeah, it looks good on see camera too. Look at it. <laughs> Sorry, I shook the picture. <laughs> <laughs> But it's always line upon line. That's that's the way God does things. That's right. Because why? He's building our faith. We have to trust in him. Mm -hmm. We got to listen to him. We got to obey every step. Amen. Okay. All right. Prophetic time terminology. God's ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. God doesn't mean the same thing with certain words as we do. <laughs> He's been, you know, the word says that, you know, to God, a thousand years is as one day, and one day is a thousand years. Amen. So in God's mind, he's only been gone two and a half days. Yeah, it's nothing. That's <laughs> so, nothing. Thank God there's only a half a day left, right? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> we hear now or this day, and we think immediately or within 24 hours. Yes. However, in prophetic term terminology, these, term, mm -hmm. these terms... Do not, do not always mean what we assume they mean. Right. In other words, Jesus said, behold, I come quickly mm -hmm. and I have my reward with me. Well, that was over 2,000 years ago. So apparently his uh, uh, expression quickly is different from ours. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Samuel prophesied judgment on Saul by telling him that now, your kingdom shall not continue. God's timetable for now was 38 years. Yeah. Samuel prophesied judgment again on Saul, saying, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you this day. Mm -hmm. and has given it to a neighbor of yours that is better than you. This day was 24 years later, when the kingdom of Israel was transferred to David. Mm -hmm. When personal prophecy comes forth, it is divinely decreed, and established in the spiritual heavenly realm. Mm -hmm. But it may be many years later before it is fulfilled in the natural realm. You know, I just want to share this with you, right? Our, what we consider our base prophecy for our ministry occurred in 1996. Mm -hmm. And we believe just now with this facility where we just received eight months ago mm -hmm. is the beginning of the fulfillment of certain mm -hmm. aspects of that prophecy we received over 20 years ago. That's right. Okay, that's why you've got to continue to stand in faith and trust right. God. Right. Now Amen. I know what some I know what you're thinking. You're thinking if it's going to take that long and it requires that much effort, why bother? I can hear it in your little mind. <laughs> and I'm telling you, that's exactly what the devil wants you to think. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's always what he wanted you to think. Mm -hmm. That God's against you, mm -hmm. or that his ways are too hard, or you're missing out on something. Listen, when you get to the place where you're, you're walking in some of the fullness of what God has for you, it's a joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's worth the wait. Oh, it is. Just, it definitely yeah. is. Just do it a day what he told you to you do, do, and tomorrow you'll be where you're supposed to be. That's right. Keep it simple. That's right. Uh, this teaching is all about just, just giving you revelation and, and clarifying that the timing, God's timing is different from ours, so that you don't get dis discouraged, mm -hmm. okay? If it doesn't happen in the time you think, right. that doesn't mean the answer is no, right. okay? That's, that's the whole right. point here. And you can see in the scriptures that, you know, people were promised things and it took a while all right and the greater the ministry the greater the calling the greater the vision the longer the process of preparation why because he doesn't want you to fall when when you get there that's right okay he wants you to have your faith built right because the enemy will try to attack you yeah right. so god wants you to stand 
Right. Amen. So he um, grows us up. I hate to think what would happen if we were trying to do what we're doing now back in 1996. Yeah. And we thought we were ready and didn't know. <laughs> mm. Come on, God, let's go. Yeah. Hurry up. What's taking so long? Here come the Herberts. Yeah. Come on, God. Get ready. All right. Hallelujah. 819. For some reason, he wasn't overly impressed. <laughs> Amen. So these are some of the terminology that you'll hear in prophecy. Immediately can be one day to three years. Very soon can be 30, uh, mm -hmm. three, year, three to 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now or this day can be 10 to 40 years. Mm -hmm. I will mean sometime during your lifetime if you're obedient. So when he says, I will do this for you. Right. Amen. It could be at any point during your lifetime. Right. Okay. Soon was the expression you Jesus used to describe the time of his quick return. Mm -hmm. The process of bringing to pass prophetic term patience, soil that grows patience in tribulation. Mm -hmm. So we have to go through that process. Amen. Now, I just want to quote to you a scripture that's meant something I've thought, been thinking and studying for years. Matthew 20, verse 16. So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. Now, when we first came into the prophetic, I told Linda I was concerned that so many people were called being called to be prophets and, and apostles and all this kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, an awful lot of apostles and prophets out there, you know. But then this scripture, would, the Lord began to reveal this scripture to me. The last will be first and the first last. See, it's not where you start, it's where you end up. That's right. You got to endure to the end. So the last will be first and the first last. Yeah. For many are called, but few are chosen. Mm -hmm. Their call goes out to many people, mm -hmm. but few right. are chosen to receive the task. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, prophetic principles that must penetrate our soul. Wait a minute, wait a minute, honey. You have to complete that. Wait a minute, because there's going to be people out there say, well, why wasn't I chosen? Well, okay. but he said you weren't. If you're right. concerned about it, you still got a chance. Well, see, here's here's the whole thing. Many people turn it down. Okay. Right. They don't want to pass the test. They don't want to go through the trial. They don't want to go through the process. Okay. okay. It's Many just like, people at some point in the process give up. All right. So let's let's take a real world example. <laughs> I don't know what your experience is, but we just went through something. Mm -hmm. Okay. The God told us, you know, we're we're praying for the gift of working of miracles mm -hmm. and the gift of faith. Right. Okay. These things don't grow on trees. No. All right. And it's not that it's not that we can earn it, but we have to obey. Right. Okay. And so you got to be willing to go through the testing, through the trial, through whatever. And, and we don't know what that was, but all we know is God told us to do certain things. So he told us, get this facility, which is mm -hmm. five times the expense of the old one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it has been a hassle to get these permits, to work with the government, you know, oh, to... Brother. I mean, we've been working this for almost nine months now, but praise God, we're almost there. But we had to be willing to do all this. Right. Okay. We had to be willing to go online and say, look, we, we need help with finance. Right. Okay. That humbles us. Right. Okay. We don't like, you know, begging people for money. All right. Right. And, you know, I mean, you, you got to humble your, yourself and, and you we have don't to feel like how telling to some inspector, you know, and then, but, and, and then yeah. they told us, you know, then they up their requirements and then we had to change again. But in God knew we were going to have to go through all this, but we had to be willing to mm -hmm. obey. Right. Okay. But, and we, and we could have thrown in the towel. But and, look <laughs> at the timing of God. Amen. That, that we got the building. That's it. And right after we got the building, COVID started. Well, all right. Oh um, yeah. Right in the middle. Of it. Right in the smack in the middle of yeah, it. COVID started. Yeah. All the requirements that the government had started. Yeah. We had to believe for finance, which God's people saw that we was covered. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Amen. And throughout that time, nobody got sick 
because we were not gathered together like that. Mm -hmm. Now we have vaccines. Now we're growing into a place where we can meet together again. All the uh, permit work is done. We're just waiting on Amen. paperwork now. Amen. Uh, everything we needed to do has been done. Mm -hmm. So getting that building then was the perfect time. Mm -hmm. Now, did it look like the perfect time when it happened? No, it sure didn't. You know, to Linda <laughs> and I were saying, like, what in the world? You know? Yeah. But we've mm -hmm. learned some things over mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. We've learned some things through the other experiences we've had. We knew in our spirits that this was the building Covenant Life Church was supposed to have. Yeah. And so we pursued it and we got it. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we had to do what we had to do to get ready to move into it. Right. So now when opening day comes, I want to tell you, <laughs> there is going to be a hallelujah shout and a dancing in the aisles. Amen. Because God brought it to pass. That's right. Amen. And we know it was him. Now he used us. But it was him that opened the doors, provided what we needed, uh, gave us the favor with the people we needed to have favor with, mm -hmm. got the advice we needed at the right time. It was God all the way. And so we're just grateful to the Lord. For but all to that. get to the next level, we had to go through this. <clears throat> okay. And we didn't know what we had to go through, but we knew that we had to obey. That's right. So that's, that's the point. The last will be first, and the first last. For many are mm -hmm. called, but few are chosen. Mm -hmm. Prophetic principles that must penetrate our soul and be birthed into our very being. Mm -hmm. There are those that are not willing to pay the price to go through the divine process mm -hmm. required to obtain the prophetic promises. Yeah. We must realize that the mightier the ministry, the more time it takes to make that woman or man of God. The greater the prophetic promise of powerful blessing, the longer the process of preparation. Those who suddenly become successful without going through the process will usually not be able to maintain their personal purity or go on to maturity. King Saul and King Solomon are two examples of this kind of tragedy. When God says, I will, he means we will. He will do it in you and through you. He'll enable you to do it. God will do what you can't do, but he won't do what you can. Amen. And what you can do is much greater than what you think. That's something I've learned about the Lord. He knows we're capable, what we're really capable of. Not what our parents said we're capable of, not what our school teachers said we could do, mm -hmm. not even what pastors and others religious leaders told us we can do god will have the last word and if he says i will he means you and him together mm -hmm. he will do it in you through you yeah. he will enable you to do it mm -hmm. god spoke seven you wills to moses concerning egypt the children mm -hmm. of israel and the prophetically promised Canaan land but god's I will means I will work supernaturally where it will not work for you in the natural. He told Moses he would do this. He would do that. Mm -hmm. Him, Moses. But it was God through Moses right, amen. that did those things. Yeah. God said, I will. Gideon, for example, in Judges 6, 12. No wonder Gideon needed some reassurance and confirmation before he would go. Thank God that when he says you will, he means we will. Whether the prophetic terminology is I will or you will, in God's terminology, it always means we will do it together. And saints, I'm here to say, I'm very, very happy that he always goes with me. Mm -hmm. What is God's answer when somebody says they can't do something? Mm -hmm. what, what does he say? Mm -hmm. Do you know? He says, nevertheless, I will go with you. Mm -hmm. Well, 
that's not very reassuring when you're looking at <clears throat> 30,000 Philistines with iron chariots. Mm -hmm. But when he says that, be assured, you're going to win. Mm -hmm. You're going to go through. Mm -hmm. God has got your back. Yeah. The Lord does. The Lord is with us. Mm -hmm. He'll never leave us. Mm -hmm. He'll never forsake you. And, I, and there's somebody out there with a, with a very uh, serious medical challenge. And the Lord says, that's what it is. It's a challenge. Mm -hmm. God says, you have to meet that challenge with faith. Amen. He said, you're not going to die. Mm -hmm. You're going to live and fulfill his destiny for you. Mm -hmm. I believe it's cancer. Mm -hmm. I believe it's lung cancer. I want to pray right now, Father, whoever that is, Father, just send your anointing now. Amen. Send your power. Mm -hmm. Send your word and heal them and deliver us from all our fears. Yes. Thank you. Father, I come against that fear mm -hmm. that's in the heart. And let, and let me reassure you mm -hmm. that having fear about something like that is not a sin. Mm -hmm. It's natural. It's mm -hmm. the natural part of being human. Mm -hmm. But if you put faith in God, put faith in his word, he's going to deliver you from that. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, Father, we seal the word tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you, honey. Okay, we're going to switch to the prophetic. Amen. Amen. So, please stay tuned. Uh, this first word is for Carol Kelly. All right. So, Carol, if you're out there, all right. And if you have a recording device, go ahead. And uh, and I also am going to re record this. Okay. So, again, this is for Carol Kelly. Father, we just thank you right now. Uh, and the Lord says, daughter, I'm with you. The Lord says, I have not abandoned you. And the Lord says that you've been reaching out to me for with several things. And there's been several concerns that you've had even uh, with your own family and also with medical. There's been a lot of medical uh, challenges. And the Lord says that even hearing this word tonight uh, encouraged you. And God says that the timing uh, is, it, there's a fullness of time uh, for the fruition of those things that you've been praying for and seeking me for. And so the Lord says that I'm bringing circumstances together for your benefit, for your good. And I, and I just see that there's various things that God is like bringing together, okay? And so when he brings these things together will be the fullness of time. And you're going to see the fruition of those things that you've been praying about. And uh, there's been a, a real attack upon you for depression. There's been an oppression coming against you. And the Lord says, in the days of head, I'm going to break that off of you, says God. And but the Lord says, I want you to stand in faith, continue to stand in faith and declare my word over you, says the Lord. The Bible says, declare a thing and it shall be established. And so the Lord says, I want you to de declare deliverance over yourself every day, says the Lord. Amen. And, you know, um, Miss Carol, in um, Psalm 34 uh, there's a scripture that says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Amen. Get that scripture and, and say that scripture over yourself every day. Okay. And, and in the spirit, you're going to be hammering at that wall and that oppression. And you're going to, you're going to break it by the spirit. Amen. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Okay, and keep on speaking in tongues, amen, and crying out to the Lord for deliverance, amen. He, he promises he will deliver us, and that's your word of promise tonight. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just, we just impart that to my sister tonight. Lord, stir her up in the prophetic apostolic, Lord, we release encouragement right now and deliverance in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, praise God. All right, this next word is for Crystal McIntyre. Amen. Crystal, I just hear the Lord say 
Uh, daughter, I'm so pleased with you, says God. You've been tuning in. You've been listening. And the Lord says that you've been reaching out for greater growth and greater things in Christ. And the Lord says, even tonight, as you heard the word and you heard this word about terminology and timing, it has revealed more aspects of my character and my word and my will and my ways to you. And so the Lord says it, it's illuminating. Amen. What has happened tonight was revelation is illuminating God's word to you and making it more real so that you can grasp it even, even to a greater extent. And it's going to cause your faith to rise. Amen. So the Lord says, continue. Amen. To lean on my word. Continue to trust in me and know that I've heard your prayer and I am responding to your prayer, says God. But there is, again, that fullness of time. And there is my way. Amen. Remember, my ways are not your ways. But the Lord says, daughter, I love you. And I heard you. And I am responding, says the Lord. So continue to stand in faith, says God. So, Father, we just release that word to my sister right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, this word is for Kavina. Amen. Father, we just thank you for Kavina. And the Lord says, daughter, you're on path. Stay on path and be encouraged tonight. And the Lord says, you're hearing my word with an accuracy. So don't let the devil tell you or, or talk you into something else. For God says, you're hearing my word. And the Lord says, a great deal of your strength comes from reading the word of God. So continue to soak yourself in the word of God, just convene and read anywhere, okay, especially the New Testament, but read. I just got the word 1 Corinthians, so start looking in 1 Corinthians and then Ephesians, and just absorb yourself in the word, and the Lord says as you do that, it's going to encourage you in ways that you didn't realize, but the Lord says, daughter, I'm pleased with you, says God, and I'm with you, I'm for you, and I'm releasing new strategy for those situations in your life right now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release fresh strategy to Kavina right now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for her in Jesus' name. And I just bind up that grief and depression right now. And even there's been a spirit of confusion uh, trying to come against your mind. And I bind that confusion right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And we seal that word in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, this next word is for Tina Mc McLeod. Father, we just thank you for Tina. And the Lord says, daughter, you're in the school of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord says, I'm raising you to new levels. Be patient, says God, because the schooling is going to take some time. But the Lord says, you're on the fast track. You're doing well. And God says that I even tonight give you a new anointing. There's a new, uh, there, there's a greater grasp and revelation of my word coming to you. And so the Lord says, continue in the word. And having done all to stand. And the Lord says, remember, you're in this training right now uh, to not look at circumstances, but to believe me for the things that I've spoken to your heart. Lay hold of those promises, says God, and don't let go of them, says the Lord. Amen. And so, Father, I just thank you for Tina right now. Father, we release a greater anointing to her in Jesus' name. Father, open her eyes even in a whole new way that she sees things in the spirit in a whole new way in Jesus name. Amen. And we seal that in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. This next word is for James Mullen. Amen. And uh, Mr. James, I'm hearing that for you also. God is continuing to build you and grow you and raise you to new prophetic levels. Amen. And even tonight, when you heard about the terminology uh, there's been fresh revelation released to you with respect to the terminology. Amen. And it's bringing fresh hope and it's going to bring an increase in faith. And the Lord says, you have great and precious promises. Don't let go of them, says God. Don't let go of not even one of them. But the Lord says, I'm going to bring everything to pass in the fullness of time for you. And so the Lord says, even now, I'm even uh, causing you to come out of debt. And God says, I'm opening up the windows of heaven for you that you can't even contain. My blessing, says God. And I see greenbacks coming down for you, James. God is, is releasing a financial blessing upon you, even right now, 
in Jesus' name. And James, I also hear the Lord say that you were encouraged when you heard me uh, kind of give the testimony of the pastor's house. Amen. There are secret desires that you've had. And God is working all things together for your benefit, for your good, to bring together these desires of your heart, to bring them to pass. So be encouraged tonight. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord. And I just see, James, you're reading the word and you're rejoicing in God's word. Amen. Keep on. So, Father, we release that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, for Sharice at Civils, pray for disposition tomorrow. Deposition, excuse me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release favor on Sheree right now. In Jesus' name, for these court proceedings, for the deposition, Father, we just thank you that she'll have great favor with everyone, Father. In Jesus' name, great favor to be released. Sophia, amen. Pray for son, Zach. Father, we just lift up Zach to you right now. And Father, I just ask you right now, the Lord, that you bless him with a job. And all those who need a job, raise your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release blessing and opportunity to come into a being for every person right now who's raised their hand who needs a job. Father, in Jesus' name. And all those having debt today that want to want to be free of debt, amen, raise your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of debt and this devouring spirit right now. And even in some cases, there's a spirit of lust of the eyes where we want to keep buying things. Father, we bind that right now. That's a demonic assignment. And we break the power of that right now in Jesus' name. Father, your word says you are the provider of all our need. And you have come that we might have life and life abundantly. So, Father, we release abundant life to your people right now. In Jesus' name, when we bind that spirit of lack right now, in Jesus' name, amen. For Lottie Cha's brother, amen, we just release a spiritual guidance right now for her brother for a better job, in Jesus' name, and for her mother, Lord, we lift her up and we just release healing on her right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. And for government, Father, we just thank you. Lord, uh, we just release even uh, on uh, President Biden and VP Harris, Father, and the, and the government, Father, just cause them to do the right thing. We lift them up right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we ask your blessing upon our country. Father, turn the hearts of the people to you, God. Lord, bring revival in our land right now. In Jesus' name. And Father, uh, for Lottie, we just ask uh, for guidance. Bring revelation to her. A new strategy, a new vision right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Father, we lift up Armani to you right now in the name of Jesus. Um, amen. And Armani, I hear the Lord say, I don't know what you got going on, but the Lord says you're on track. Uh, amen. And you've been faithful and the Lord is really pleased with you. So just keep going. Amen. Just keep on going. Amen. Father, we just release a blessing to Armani right now in Jesus name, a blessing to our pastors, elder, Dr. Shayla. Father, we just release blessing on all of our elders, on our staff, our leaders right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for our church. We just give you praise and honor and glory for the miraculous things that you have done in our midst. Father, thank you for giving us the timing uh, for the open house and when to start church. Father, we just thank you for the occupancy permit coming in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you praise, all the things that you have done. All you out there tonight right now who need healing, any kind of physical healing, raise your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release physical healing on every person tonight. Oh God, because of your grace and mercy, Father, we add grace, grace upon all of us, Father. By his stripes, we are healed. In the name of Jesus, Lord, your word says you are the Lord that heals us. And Father, we receive healing right now. Amen, because of your grace. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over your people right now. And Father, we release a blessing over every person listening tonight, every home that's represented. And Father, we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If there's anybody out there tonight who would say, Pastor Linda, I don't know if I know Jesus. We want to give you the opportunity to get saved tonight. Just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me my sins. I want to live for you for this moment on. In Jesus' name, amen. And if there's anybody out there who wants the baptism of the Holy Spirit, raise your hand. Father, we release the anointing for them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now. In Jesus' name. We stir them up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Praise God. We want to remind you, uh, this week is normal. Tomorrow night, Prayer of Tabernacle, 7.30 EST. And Friday, 7.30 p.m. is uh, Table Talk. This Sunday, you don't want to miss it. Apostle Desiree Fox will be in service on Facebook at 2.30 in the afternoon. Amen. You're going to have a great time. She is awesome. Amen. Praise God. Okay, Armani, is there anything else tonight? Amen. Thank you, Lord. If you have a prayer request, chat it in. Amen. Even after the broadcast, amen, we still pray. Amen. Always. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, Father, is there anything else? Uh, anybody out there having dental or speech problems? Uh, mouth? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release a healing right on speech centers, dental, mouth areas right now, throat in the name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. Oh, I just come against allergies right now. Allergies of all kinds. We bind it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for healing. Healing is the children's bread. And we release healing right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, praise God. I want to invite you to our website, www.covenant-church-life. Covenant-life-church.org. Amen. Covenant Life Church. Amen. Please go to our website. Amen. There's a donate button in the upper right-hand corner. And we appreciate any donation that you send in. Amen. Praise God. We still have rent to pay. Amen. And uh, in electricity bills. So we appreciate anything you send in. Amen. Praise God. Well, on behalf of Apostle Jeff and I and our pastors and all of our people, we want to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast tonight. We love you. We appreciate you. Amen. Everybody have a great night. Bless you all.